NJSIA group uh, previews here with John Kroger, the man, the myth, the legend, the uh, man who's seen more New Jersey baseball than anybody. And our preview week is sponsored by Emory Gloves. 15% off your custom, your one of one custom, if you check out www.emorygloveco.com and type in NJ15 at checkout as we do our best to support Jersey Baseball Nation. We got the big group now with the big groups, non-public A and B. We got, we look at the top five that's coming. We got all five of those teams involved here in non-public A and B. Um, we're going to start with B first because we like to make people watch till the end. Um, no, non-public B is one one bracket where it is not possible to have a state final rematch because Randy beat uh, Immaculata last year and Immaculata bumped back down to South or up to South A. So we will have a new sectional champion no matter what. Will yep. we have two? We're going to start up north, non-public B. We've got some teams there. I don't know that they're on the level of the South B teams that are st state top five, but as far as a nice even bracket, Rutgers Prep probably a slight favorite. Zach Fronio, outstanding pitcher. Andrew uh, Parisi behind the plate um, can hit the ball about eleven and a half miles. He was a state was a freshman last year. State, think about that. What he did last year. State RBI leader, fifty-one RBIs as a freshman. And batted like. 528, 545, 12 home runs as a freshman. Um, he did a great job. And you got Mo I guess, Beard. I, I hear it from him all the time. You got Mo Beard, always uh, uh, tough. Um, Coach Shepard there. You got Montclair Kimberly putting uh, crazy things into their baseball facilities and starting to see the benefits. Gil St. Bernard's, um, so close to being the state finals last year. They lose the moats. They still got some pretty darn good players. You, you yep. get Zach Wendell at short, and you got De Gregorio behind the plate. You got two of the best at their position. And another mover, right? Immaculata dropped from or went from B to A. St. Thomas Aquinas goes from South A to, to North or non public North B. And uh, they were young last. Everybody slept on them. They like to let everybody know that we all slept on them. I don't know that they're quite the level of the top teams, but I think that this is a much better fit for them than trying to win in South A, that's for sure. Yeah. So what do we see? What do we see here? Um, I think the I North... Think I, forgot. I forgot a big one in there, too. What are you talking St. about? Mary's. I Where? St. Mary's. Oh, yeah, St. Mary's, yeah. But that that's... Listen, that North B one, um, St. Mary's, Rutgers Prep, um, even Morris Catholic is going to be better, and Gil St. Bernard's, one of those teams, and MKA, MKA's, MKA, listen, that could be team. There's five teams that are going to fight for that. We all know what the Group B is. Well, I shouldn't say that. The Group B final, 
Eustace versus Rainey or Eustace versus Gloucester Catholic. Those three teams, whoever gets the second and third seed, they're going to be fighting for that number one seed. Oh, my God. That that number one seed is going to have a huge advantage because the other two teams are going to have to play each other. Um, so can we talk about that this in about three months and talk about who's going to win that? But yeah. right now, Rainey's just completely loaded with 10 Division One players that are signed. But they don't have as good as pitching staff as Gloucester Catholic, who has four complete animals on the mound. They're animals. Those guys are throwing 88 to 93. Um, Tate Darius, uh, Vaccarella, Tanner Nolan. Come on. that That's a... That's one heck of a pitching staff, man. Um, but Rainey, they, AJ Gracia, um, you know, uh, they have three really good pitchers outside of that. Well, they have more than that, but um, I don't know if they they match up the Gloucester Catholic on the mound, but they definitely match up with the bats. And then they got uh, Rainey got the transfer, Costello uh, from Free Old Township, which really could put them over the top. Um, I don't know, man. Eustace, you told me yet, yet um, the catcher is hurt. Um, yeah, the catcher, Trey Martin, is going to be yeah, missing. That, that's a tough one. They they needed him bad. Um, Fortunately for him, he's a junior, so he'll come back and uh, still He's committed the, already to East Tennessee. Yep, so. East Tennessee State. It's a great, great catcher, big, big, you know, strong kid, just hits uh, – it can hit bombs with uh, with anybody. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go rainy, 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 rainy. They're they're top five team already in the state. They're ranked nationally. The, I'm going with rainy. I was gonna I say mean, when we do this, to lose. Rainy in the south. I'm gonna go with St. Mary's Gill winner, uh, and and uh, St. Mary's. I'm gonna go with them. Tyler Giordano is gonna have a great year. Leadoff hitter, catcher. Nigel John is the new coach at St. Mary's, taking over for Dennis Holtz, who's now the AD at at Donovan, yeah. I'm, 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 my pick is St. Mary's, and then they travel down and they play Rainy, and they lose fourteen nothing in the state. Mm. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with with Prep, Rutgers Prep, maybe because okay. I want, because I want to see Zach go, uh, Fronio go against the the North, I mean the South team in the, in the finals, and it's a, you know, I think he's the best pitcher in North Bay. Um, so we'll see, but I, I think Rainey wins. Uh, yeah, they go back to back ultimately. I think Ryan Costello is, uh, as you said, what puts him over the top. Oh sure. Um, South A. They don't, they, don't, they don't even need Ryan, but I'm just saying we're, Ryan's. Just added. We're not, well, I'm, I, when I say over the top, I mean against Gloucester Catholic, not a. Yeah. You know, North. North well, I don't even know where I'm here because we got North A. We got North A is usually craziest bracket at the top and you could certainly argue that you got four top 10 teams um we're not even counting uh st peter's um who is an awfully good team we're not even counting everybody's favorite sleeper to the point where they're not even a sleeper anymore in DePaul catholic which could certainly end up in the top 20 by the end of the year um you got st joe's who was the state champ two years ago but they're you know, still kind of rebuilding from that. You got a couple of other teams who are awfully good that, you know, Pope John is uh, really strong this year. Um, but it's still the big four being Seton Hall prep with their pitching. You got Bergen Catholic with, uh, you know, it, with uh, Luca Reyes, who might be the most, explode, you know, best mm -hmm. all-around player in New Jersey. You got Don Bosco, and they're awesome. Not quite as much as last year because Caden Dana's not there, but they're still pretty darn good. And then Del Barton, which might be better than all of them. Yeah. Um, I truly think that Dwight Inglewood High School with Frankie Salvano, he's going to win his league. He's going to come in. He's going to get a bad seed, but because of the power points, and he's going to just – knock somebody out he's gonna win one game and that could be a, a really good team and it, it could throw a little screwdriver in this whole north um don bosco prep gonna be a good hitting lineup i just don't they i just don't know if they have enough pitching to go all the way again i mean 
Um, and Bergen Catholic is going to be really good. Bergen mm -hmm. Catholic, they, they're sticking together. They're, uh, I think this might be the year Bergen Catholic makes a lot of noise. But I'm going to uh, – and, and you said DePaul, uh, Anthony Morano and Anthony Holchi, um, and Cooper Montalbano. I, those guys, they have 10 arms, DePaul. It, you, I don't care if four or five get hurt or four or five are used. They got five more. These guys are th throwing them out left and right. Uh, Ziza and Gams are doing a great job getting kids in. It wouldn't shock me one bit. I think my biggest worry here is consistency with the Paul. Um, 14 and 14, I, I can see them doing some damage when they could win the Passaic County Tournament. Another team that could probably win two games in the state and beat anybody. But they're going to be prepared because they're going to play Joe's twice. They're going to play Bosco twice. And they're going to play Bergen twice. And Paramus Catholic, listen, Paramus Catholic is going to be a one-game one, team, one game wonder. Makai Moore transferred there to Paramus Catholic. Mm. I don't know if you knew that. So that team could be good one day and then go out and lose to yeah. a team that won a game before. So – there's some teams in there that could nitpick and, and make an, a team pitch somebody they don't want to pitch instead of holding them back. But um, Bill Barton's going to win it. If the, Bruce Chattel's not accepting anything less than a, a state championship, number one team in the state this year. Those kids at Bill Barton are so hungry and want to be number one so bad. <laughs> I was going to say, you're looking for like at a crime scene or whatever, you're always looking for motive. And the way that their season ended last year mm -hmm. against Don Bosco with that bang bang call on the out of play uh, foul right. ball that, yeah. you know, Martin it's like. makes a great catch, goes yeah, out of bounds. Like I can't even fault the umpire because this isn't like the majors where you can go frame by frame instant replay, you know, because it, it was like. He either just barely made the catch with his, you know, whatever you want to call It's like you just got to see it and call but it. He, you know what it is? Bosco was a great team last year. But, man, when you – that was one of the greatest high school baseball catches of all time in New Jersey. Yeah, it's like how do you not – If you yeah. watch that video, the heat falls down at third yeah. base. He gets up like he's doing some type of <laughs> workout at his workout place. You could tell that kid work. He runs another 40 feet in two and a half seconds and makes a play. How do you not allow that? Yeah. And, That's and just an amazing play. So they got the they got the motive to win it all, and they got the incentive for to mm -hmm. win it all, and they got the talent to win it all. So this could be, you know, it's uh and they and it's certainly not gonna be a one year wonder, right? I mean, we we okay. talked about some of the freshmen that you don't know what impact they have this year but you know you even get down to like aj sasento and uh and and sal garcia, and garcia. yeah you know it's like you That's they may so not be guys back it, they may not be starting this year but no they'll 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 help they're out good and they will have them. they'll have an impact somewhere sure sure bruce i talked to bruce about those two guys the other day and and he said what do you think? And I'm like, well, they're young and they, they're going to they're gonna help out some way, shape, or form. Like you said, the, you know, I don't want to leave St. Joe's regional out. I, I, I know I took a little bit of heat on Twitter because I didn't put them in the top four teams in Bergen County. I, that was the four teams that I think that are the best four teams. Listen, Chad Falcons there. They, got, they do have some major injuries. Uh, bro, uh, their center fielder. Um, is out for the year. I think he tore his hamstring. Um, and then one of their other pitchers got hurt and he's out for the year. So they'll be good, but I don't know if they have the pitching to. No, to I would never. First of all, I would never put anything past Chad Falcon. Um, one of the most unique skill sets. Sure. Um, good player, Chad. Yeah. You know, it, I but, like him as a hitter. He, but again, he, I don't know that they're, you know, there's like two categories of, of teams in North A, and there there's the teams that can beat anybody or the teams that can win, you know, the four in a row you're going to need to to win the section. 
I don't you see know? Joe's doing that. And I, but I, but like I said, they they fit into the, you know, he's throwing, everybody's off balance. They can beat anybody, but you know, how do they repeat it is the question. I think I can point. tell you one thing: no one's going to be running on St. Joe's this year. That cat, that kid, Mers, their catcher, is a junior. Wow, wow, does he have a cannon? South A is about as unpredictable as it gets as well. You've got the six-time defending champ, St. Augustine. And I'll tell mm -hmm. you what, they've got talent. They've got pitching. They're a darn good team. And if they win it again this year, then you just got to give it up to them because CBA has – you talk about those devastating one-two combos. Um, pitching wise, you got Rocasano who really came into Luke yeah. Rocasano came into his own, and then you got Chris Lavonis who blew up over the summer and is nasty. You've got Pingree, which still has some some stuff left. You got I take chances. Yeah, I mean, CBA is not is more than just pitching. I mean, Harrison Champy's back. Harrison Champy, uh, Zane Zaneski can get the ball. He's back. There's the no thing with, with what hurt St. Augustine's, and I, and I spoke to Mike Bylan the other day. Listen, of course, Lavari's back and Fury's back. Great one, too. Maybe the one of the best in New Jersey. Yep. Problem is their their best hitter, Serrano, transferred to some school in Long Island. Um, and that really hurts. Jordan Serrano is going to be a guy. Yeah. Um, he could swing the bat. And He's an all-around talent. Yeah, Mike said he goes. Um, a lot of my freshmen from last year are going to be playing varsity this year, so I don't know how their quick sophomores are good. That's uh, again, it, it we'll may say. not may not be enough to win it all, but it ain't going to no. be because they don't have talent. You know, they're they're that's a really good group. Saint it, Joe's. We talk about. Uh, think, go ahead. So, what were you going to say? I was going to say Saint Joe's lost the you know they came in the last year with oh they got the best combo ever you know pitching wise yeah. they might they're gonna be a better team this year yeah attitude attitude and, and, and they don't have to worry about scouts being there and and, and they and, hit the crap out of the ball one three, yeah they're, they're gonna score a run this year it's gonna be a total different ball game because Mark G Lucy's not gonna allow that no there ain't no the best player in the state of New Jersey Right now, the most – when I say the best player, what he can do at his position and what he can do at, at the plate, nobody in New Jersey is better at what he does defensively than Mark Gialucci. There isn't a better player defensively than Gialucci. See, Mark, Mark, doesn't want you to say that. Mark doesn't want you to say that because he thrives on doubters. So. It doesn't matter because then you walk <laughs> him and then he's still second and third. The kid can fly. Gonna, I mean, he's going gonna, to Virginia – St. Joe's been touching. He's not going to allow kids. He listen. If you don't work hard in practice, Mark will turn around. And I've seen him. Get out of here. Leave. Don't stay here if you don't want to practice. That's the way he is. He's a high level kid. He works harder than anyone I've ever seen. He's ready to roll. Watch for St. Joe's been touching to yeah, go but, after to North Brunswick for that title. That's going to be one of the best high school baseball games of the year when they play North Brunswick. Because their their pitching isn't quite as high level. Um, but, yeah, but Rios does what. a good job in Mulvaney. And then De Silva is going to be the wild card yep. here. He transferred in from Union. Yep. And he, he's 88-91, right? I know he had a little bit of problems throwing strikes at in high school. But he also can hit, too. Yeah. If he... I think with Jim Lucy back there, he'll settle him down. I think De Silva makes St. Joe's a uh, a contender. No, and, and you know you don't have to in be. In terms perfect. of winning a state title, I'm talking about. And you don't have to be perfect when you're going to score 15 runs a game or whatever right. they're going to score. Um, How about this one? Who does St. John's Vienni beat to knock out out of this? Because they're more they're more than capable. I was going to say over. they can beat anybody. Paul the uh, Paul the Six has yeah, one of the best, that. but they have one of the best players in the state in Mike Lucarelli. I know. Um, I, I'm not going that route. We're go but now we've got we we've, we've left two teams out, both down the shore. One I'm going to go to as another on that sleeper list is Donovan Catholic. Gavin Degnan, 
Jake Marciano and Hunter Lefkis. The, two, the, the last two were two pitchers. They have eight pitchers returning. They got Sean O'Keefe back. Yeah, this this team they're good. I think they're going to be good in Ocean County. I just don't I don't see them winning a state title. No, they haven't, but they haven't played in enough big games. And listen, um, great coaching <laughs> staff there. I just don't know if they played in enough big games to win a state title. No, but that's not a knock because when you look at the team that to me is the favorite, you're talking about the team that in my head rankings, which mean absolutely nothing, is going to start out as number one in the state. And one of the Who is that? In the Northeast. Who's number one? Oh, well, you have to wait, but. Um, oh, the favorite okay. to me, the favorite to me has got to be Red Bank Catholic. And I mean, everyone's starting... saying, why are they number one? Why are they number one? Well, listen, the only team in this state of New Jersey that can honestly argue how good is Rainey. Yep. Like Bosco won last year, but that was last year. I know they got a couple, some hitters and a couple pitchers. Yo, this Red Bank Catholic team is loaded. And they could lose opening day to Rumson. Yep. They could. <laughs> they could. Sure. They could lose game two. I mean, they and then they play wall game three and four. Yeah. Who has four tough games like that? So, uh, buddy, your back's against the wall, bro. Don't let me, don't make me look bad here, buddy. RBC number one preseason. They and I it. think they're number four in baseball, America and Mid Atlantic. And uh, Rainey's number six, Mid Atlantic. Um, oh, yeah. By, by day two of the season, you could certainly argue that. I got him backwards in the in the order, and Randy should be number one. But I'm going to say, like I said, for now, this is my number one team. They got everything. They got pitching. They got front line pitching. They can hit. You know, they got top talent in 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 all different areas. And then they got a great great catcher who doesn't get the attention he deserves. Yeah, it's, Shane. Uh, Shane Anderson. Shane, yep. Yeah. And uh, I I expect Sean Griggs to be like like a different dude. This year, like that kid. But what makes RBC the team? And I think in my my eyes, and I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Svensson puts them at another level. That yeah. kid was really good last year. He's got three pitches. He's big. He's strong. He's an ox on the mound. Then we have a similar kid just like him, Declan, uh, Declan Leary. And then against the team that they probably could win, he's got three, four with Pryor, probably can get him by those games. It's going to be a tough team to beat. That's they got a transfer coming in from Marist before the end of the year, too. Going to Marist. Yeah, no, oh, oh, a kid from Staten Island you're yeah. talking about. Yes. Yeah, Buddy said the uh, lefty pitcher, actually. Yeah. He said he's pretty good. He, he throws the ball 85, 86. Yeah. Um, and he's got a fade. He's, he's good. Yeah, um, I can't remember the kid's name. I haven't seen him, um, but and, that's and what they, he said. He, he thought he'd be really helpful. Listen. And they got the Bulldog, obviously. We haven't mentioned Alex uh, Stanier. Oh, yeah, but Alex threw only three games last year. I, everyone doesn't realize Alex is tough. Alex is a tremendous hitter, 39 hits last year. Um, the kid throws 94 miles an hour for the whole game. Yeah. And he throws every pitch 94 miles an hour. That kid goes 150% not all the time. So we agree then, or actually you got you have Red Bank versus uh Del Barton in the final, right? Um oh buddy, buddy, don't kill me for this, buddy. I just think RBC playing all those games, he's gonna have a Monmouth County final and then he's gonna have a short conference final. And then he's gonna have to win a sectional, and oh my God, I, I, you know what, Marty Kenny, more, I think CBA is gonna just like slip in there and like knock somebody off and get to the state final because RBC through Stanyek and Leary had it come in relief, and in the sectional like the rain, and then the next day, um, Svensson had a throw, and then all of a sudden CBA was waiting. I'm gonna. I don't know. We'll could see. Be. Chris Lavonis could be the, Chris Lavonis could be the no. difference maker because if Chris is as good as Chris was this summer, he's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, well, let's not forget Pingree either. I mean, yeah. 
That team's I'm still going to go. You got and you got the six-time champs in there too. So I'm I'm going to still say Red Bank, even though that's an impossible bracket to predict. Um, Justin Shattuck is is everything could be everything that Cam Fluky is plus about another thirty pounds. Mm. Um, yes, you know, Eno's got to score runs though this year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, they didn't score last. They were twenty-one and seven last year in the North. Yeah. And I think the and I and I'm not mean to be funny, but they won 21 games and they averaged one and a half runs a game. I mean, they did not hit last year at all. Um and they lost their best player with a stronger lineup last year. Who's, who uh, by the way is doing well at Vanderbilt. I'm so happy for him. Um uh, you know, Elijah Foster comes back and Shattuck, the really good pitching staff. How are they going to score runs? Shep's great coach. Um, yeah, I don't. I just. I, don't I know, know these are. This is the toughest to pick. I'm going to. I'll say. I'm not going is, the Seton Hall route. That's for sure. I. I think the offense isn't going to be there. I'm um, with you on Del Barton. I could. I could go I'm, with that. I'm going to go Del Barton. Um, but you and, guys and it could be real easy to say Don Bosco, but I'm going to say Bosco because. I think they're going to get upset during the year. They're going to lose, but uh, Rodriguez is going to win some games, and I think he's going to win at the end. And they're going to out hit people. Come on, Alan Hernandez in that lineup with Eric Becker. Like, so who's geez. your north? Who's your north pick? Um, mm, Del Barton Bosco. I'm looking at my crystal ball. Oh, Bergen Catholic. Oh my God, I'm seeing red. I know. Uh, Oh, Charmblos throws a one header. Ooh. The, the good news uh, is Del Barton. I'm going Del Barton. All right. The good news is in, in two months we're gonna redo it with the actual bracket. Yeah, I may change my mind. But right now I'm gonna go with Delby. All right. Well, I'm I'm saying uh Red Bank wins it wins it all this year. Who's gonna be number one in the state at the end? That's gonna be that's my number one. That's if they're starting number one, they're finishing number one. Who do you got number one? Red Bank Catholic. Okay. Who's your who you got the you agree you agree with me to start, but who's ending the year at number one? I don't know. Number one. I think Rainy Prep probably has um if they can at least split against RBC and win either yeah. the Monmouth or short conference title, Rainy. And yeah, they've got right the fewest, with, Rainy's got the fewest landmines in the in the state tournament, right? If you figure yeah. uh the other South B team. Yeah, but think about it though. They they got to beat RBC in the Monmouth, then yep. they got to beat RBC or Rumson in the short conference, yep. and this and that. Say, they're, they're gonna have some quality wins, and then they got to beat GC or yep. they got to beat Bishop Eustis. Yep. And if they win the state final, which they should, and then they win one of those Monmouth and Shore, they absolutely deserve to be in the. Will, will deserve to be yeah. in the. Consideration, you know, yep. it, it's uh, they certainly have the talent to match up with anybody. Um, oh, by the way, I think is it April seventh or April fourteenth? I don't. Uh, Del Barton's playing Rainey. I like it. Yes, I'll be there. I'll be. I'll be. Bruce Chattel, I was talking to him the other day. He goes, "You're going to be at that game?" I go, "When is that?" I know I scheduled it last year, but they're playing the same. Where are thing. they playing? I think I'm not even sure. I think he said at Rainey because last year was at Del Barton. Okay. Um, we talked about player of the year. You told us who your, your player of the year was. Um, this is the year of the pitcher, I think, in New Jersey. I mean, when you just go through that list of stud pitchers that we've talked about over these last couple of days, from Duke McCarron to Chris Livonis to Alex Kranzler going to Vanderbilt was is one of the best pitchers in the country. Ben Schild. Cam Flukey, Will Kirk, Justin Shattuck, Echeverria, Gracia, Staniak. There are so many good pitchers. Zach Konstantinovsky obviously is, is, I would ask you, first of all, is Zach the most unique high school pitcher you've seen at that top level in, in all these years of watching New Jersey? And who's the best? Who's your pitcher of the year? I mean, Zach is, Zach is a different dude. I mean, um, I'm going to go elsewhere, though. I, I Listen, is he I, – I hate to say it, but I, I, I'm going to go – I'm driving on the Ben Shield bandwagon. 
that kid, um, I think he's going to be in a, being 11 and 0, 11 and one. And Zach, I mean, to redo what he did last year again, that's almost <laughs> impossible. That is almost how you, impossible. How do you beat that, right? Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to go Ben Shield because that, that, that heavy ball at 94 miles an hour, no one's hitting him. My biggest worry is can the two, three, and four Middletown South pitchers um, win those other games because that's going to be really tough. Player of the year, Gia Lucy's got to be in the – Gia Lucy, Becker. Um, Eric Becker is fantastic. Yeah, the uh, – Luca Reyes, I, I don't know if he's going to have the statistics. Um, You're going to put Kranzler back in that again, obviously. Um, listen, he doesn't have the supporting cast. Who's, they don't have guys hit him around him. Um, if he does what he did last year, Kranzler, that would be remarkable. I mean, he is, he's a great player. Um, we got Ryan Jarris at Cranford. You cannot forget. Yeah, I just think – you also got to take into effect that Cranford's these guys are going to pitch around Jaros. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, could Rosado at South River like bat seven hundred and fifty? <laughs> <laughs> I he mean, could. he, he could. could. Could he win Player of the Year if he bats seven fifty? I don't mean to put the pressure on him, but. I mean, it seems like that kid can do anything. How do you? How I know. Do you, I know South River doesn't have a lot, um, but that kid Rosado is special. He's special. You throw Luke Wood into the player year conversation. No group one player is going to get it unless they, unless they do something right. astronomical. But, and that's that's fair. But why would Julius Rosado get considered as a group two player when Pennsville probably plays a tougher? Well, I don't know if Luke Wood could bat seven fifty. <laughs> no, and he's got a pitch. No, he's got he a might pitch. Strike he's strike... might strike out hundred guys. If he averages seventeen and a half strikeouts a game, and he hit, and he gets sixty hits. Then yes, I, we can. Well, that's it. good. Now, Luke, you have goals for the year. We got. You have goals, goals, Luke. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, you had thirty-three hits last year as a freshman, and you had eighty-four strikeouts in forty-seven innings. Right. So I they're mean, achievable. Come on, Luke. You got to be better than that, kid. Step it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> We got a couple of days till it all gets started. John Kroger, thank you for the uh, the preview week here. Good luck, everybody. Yeah, we will see you at the field, and uh, thanks everybody for watching.